Mr. Warder. Mr. Speaker, I confess to you, I, I usually use the time that the reading clerk is reading the rule to collect my thoughts and, and uh, think about what, uh, uh, what the bill is uh, before us uh, today and, and how I'm going to try to persuade my colleagues to vote uh, yes. But we only got about uh, 15 seconds of the reading clerk uh, this morning because this rule is so straightforward and so simple. I, I, I'm thinking, why is it? Uh, because I sit on the Rules Committee. I think we do good uh, work up there. Good work is sometimes complicated work. Why is it that, that the uh, rule is so short today? And the answer is because we're in conference report season, Mr. Speaker. We're in conference report season. We've already done the hard work in the committee. We've already done the hard work on the floor. The Rules Committee has already done the hard work of sorting through dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of amendments. The Senate has done the same hard work, and we are now here on the conclusion of that work, on the first long-term transportation bill in more than a decade. Mr. Speaker, Democratic administrations, Democratic presidents, Democratic houses, Democratic senates have failed to do what we're doing today. Republican administrations, Republican presidents, Republican houses, Republican senates have failed to do what we're doing today in divided government today, Mr. Speaker, I dare say my friend from Colorado didn't get everything he wanted in this bill. I certainly didn't get everything I wanted in this bill. But we are taking the first big step forward towards certainty for the American people on transportation uh, that we've seen uh, in more uh, than a decade under both uh, administrations. Mr. Speaker, uh, House Resolution 546 is a standard rule for consideration of a conference report uh, to accompany H.R. 22, the, the FAST Act, the Fixing America Surface Transportation Act. Uh, I want to thank Chairman Bill Schuster for the way uh, that he conducted this entire process. Mr. Speaker, I have the great pleasure of serving uh, on his committee and between his leadership, the ranking member's uh, leadership, uh, Mr. DeFazio. Uh, we've crafted a bipartisan, bicameral bill. Uh, I was privileged to serve on the conference uh, committee, Mr. Speaker, that, that uh, completed uh, this work, and it worked uh, the way conference committees are supposed to work, I guess, because, Mr. Speaker, it's the first conference committee I've been on. I've been here four and a half uh, years. We don't see things get to conference uh, that often. I was a staffer around here, chief of staff for a decade, never saw a conference committee uh, from that uh, perspective. Mr. Speaker, these things don't happen that often. They should happen more. We considered a conference committee a report on, on education yesterday. We're doing transportation today. I think we might be on to something. I think we might be on to something. Uh, it, it's called uh, doing the long, hard uh, work, Mr. Speaker. I don't know how many sound bites uh, you've read about the transportation uh, bill. I don't know how much uh, press uh, the, the, uh, is being paid uh, to this uh, bill. Uh, it's taken not days, not weeks, uh, not even months, but years uh, to bring folks together uh, around this, uh, this solution, and, and folks have worked incredibly hard to make that, make that happen. It's regular order, Mr. Speaker. It's regular order. This is the way it's supposed to, to happen. We're not supposed to have a bill airdropped into the, into the House of Representatives, into the Senate, uh, under a take-it-or-leave-it uh, circumstance. What you're supposed to have are those days, those weeks, those months, and yes, even years uh, of discussion and debate and moving people together, finding that common ground, finding those solutions, moving it to a conference report at the end, and that is exactly what we've done uh, here today. Mr. Speaker, this is a report that contains views from across this conference, the members from rural districts, members from urban districts. Uh, members from districts that focus on mass transportation, members from districts that have uh, incredible road uh, needs. Uh, it covers folks from, uh, from the West in single member uh, states, uh, single district uh, states, and folks uh, from uh, the East with some of the highest uh, population densities in the country. It is an amazing accomplishment to bring all of those folks together. And I would tell you, Mr. Speaker, historically that's been the way transportation has been. Transportation is not one of those issues that divides us as Republicans and Democrats or, or even from, from East and, and West. It's one of those issues that brings It's one of those issues, uh, and there aren't many, but it's one of those issues that we actually have a constitutional responsibility uh, to perform. Uh, the Constitution does not ask much of this United States Congress when it comes to developing policy and, and practice domestically here in this country, uh, but transportation is one of those uh, issues. Mr. Speaker, I mentioned it was the first long-term bill in more than uh, a decade. That's absolutely true. 
length is important all by itself. Certainty in transportation important all by itself. We passed a two-year transportation extension, uh, Mr. Speaker. We put in uh, the requirement to streamline some of the regulatory process. Here we are more than two years later. Uh, those regulations haven't even come out yet. Building is a long-term process. Rulemaking so that people can build is a long-term uh, process. Having long-term certainty is valuable in and of itself, but that's not just what this bill does. It focuses on the National Highway Freight Network, Mr. Speaker. Uh, between Washington, D.C. and Baltimore, for example, there, there are three major federal arteries. We've got uh, the Baltimore-Washington Parkway running uh, those uh, 35 miles uh, north. We have uh, U.S. Route 1 uh, running that uh, distance. We have uh, U.S. Interstate 95 running that uh, distance. Those roads are never separated by more than about four miles. Uh, now, whether or not we need three major federal arteries uh, running between uh, uh, two cities over a period of, of over a course of, of 35 miles, that's a debate that, that we can have. What the scope of federal transportation funding should be is a debate uh, that we can have. And in this bill, we did have it, Mr. Speaker, and we're focusing on moving goods to market. This is a bill about getting to your child's soccer game on time. This is a bill about freeing up uh, congestion on America's uh, roads and improving America's uh, mass transit in a way that you don't miss uh, the first pitch. But this is also a bill about moving freight to market. It's a bill about making America's economy work. In a 21st century uh, world, we cannot have a 20th century uh, transportation system. We focus on those uh, issues that have been left on the sidelines for far too long. We focus on bridges, Mr. Speaker. Bridges. It seems so simple. It's a transportation uh, bill. There ought to be more uh, that, uh, that goes on than, uh, than just roads, than just, uh, just buses. Bridges, Mr. Speaker, turn out to be that choke point that so many of us have uh, in our district. Turns out it's expensive to build a bridge. It's environmentally uh, difficult to get the, the permits. It's, it's, it's an engineering uh, marvel to put together some of the, the bridges that we have here uh, today. And as dollars have gotten tight, many of our communities have not focused on the safety of existing infrastructure in ways that, that uh, we all know uh, our constituents uh, demand. Uh, we make that inv investment uh, in safety and security uh, today. Mr. Speaker, we streamline a lot of the federal regulation in this bill. Uh, there's not a uh, man or woman on this floor who doesn't believe that we have an obligation uh, to protect uh, uh, this, great, uh, this great earth. There's not a man or woman on this floor who doesn't uh, believe that, that constructing in an environmentally sensitive manner is a priority for us all. But there's also not a man or woman on this floor who believes it ought to take 10 years to get a yes or no answer. There's not a man or woman on this floor who thinks it ought to take eight years to get a yes or no answer. If the answer is no, the answer is no, but we deserve uh, we, our constituents deserve uh, the, some certainty uh, in that construction uh, process. We eliminate duplication. We speed up delivery. Uh, we allow states, through a pilot program, Mr. Speaker, to begin to enforce some of these federal mandates. In many cases, it's not the mandate itself that's the problem. It's the federal bureaucracy that's overburdened and can't uh, come through on permitting. We, we allow states under this bill as long as they abide by the federal uh, standards to go ahead and implement those standards on their own so that they can prioritize uh, the projects that are most important to them. And Mr. Speaker, an issue that I know is important to all of our colleagues, we, we take some steps to, uh, to get veterans back to work. This isn't the first bill that has done that, of course. We've done bill after bill after bill after bill on this floor. Hire more heroes uh, uh, most recently to say if the only thing standing between you and hi putting uh, our veterans uh, back to work is federal regulation, we want to get federal regulation out of the way. Well, we build on that again in this bill, Mr. Speaker. I don't know if you have any truck driving schools in your district, but I can't find a truck driving school in my district that doesn't have job offers waiting today for folks who sign up today. The demand is so great, Mr. Speaker, for folks to move goods uh, to market, but we have limitations on who is, a, who is eligible to drive trucks, and for good reasons, for good safety uh, concern uh, reasons. Uh, we don't want uh, folks 19, 20 years of age uh, to be driving these heavy trucks. But, Mr. Speaker, we have returning from 
Afghanistan returning from Iraq, uh, folks who have been trained by the finest uh, uh, training facility in, in all the world, the United States military, folks who have been trained in, in, the, in the skills required, the safety uh, skills required to move heavy equipment from one place uh, to another. Those, those men and women are returning uh, from uh, serving us, looking for work if they were talented enough to serve us overseas. Are they not talented enough to serve us uh, here domestically? Of course they are. We take steps to, to recognize that uh, here uh, today. Mr. Speaker, I'm still waiting on that opportunity when I can come to the floor and tell you I got absolutely everything I wanted in absolutely every line of the bill. It's only been four and a half years uh, uh, for me. I hadn't had that opportunity yet. I'm still hoping that opportunity comes. But what I can tell you, Mr. Speaker, is that I came here to make a difference. I came here to move the ball forward. I came here to do the hard things, not the easy things. The easy things have already been done. Uh, there's a reason we haven't passed a long-term bill in more than a decade. It's because it's hard to do. Uh, and I take great uh, pleasure uh, and great pride as a member of the Rules Committee, the Transportation Committee, and the Conference Committee uh, in bringing this uh, rule to the floor today. If we pass this rule, Mr. Speaker, uh, we can move to that conference uh, report and we can deliver for America uh, what has been undeliverable uh, for more than a decade. With that, I reserve the balance of my time. Gentleman reserves. For what purpose is the gentleman from Colorado seek recognition?